This video is just an introduction into what it's like to start off with a floor plan and then create renderings from it. And renderings are that 3D image of a room. When we started planning our last renovation, very soon into the project, I found myself searching for something online where I'd be able to create these visualizations myself and be able to modify them as the design changed, but also as my ideas changed and be able to problem solve as the project went on. So I looked around at a lot of different products that were available and very quickly I came across Home Styler. And Home Styler really saved the day for me because you can do so much on it. And the most incredible thing is that it's free and that you can use it on your web browser. So you don't need to download anything. You don't need to pay anything for the basic features. You can pay to have upgraded features, but you can still get everything done without paying for anything. And it's just incredible the things that you can do. You can create floor plans, you can add furniture, you can create 3D renderings, you can create video tours of the space that you've created, you can view it in wireframe, you can export it, and you can include all the dimensions and everything that you need on the exported floor plan. There's just so much you can do. It's so creative, it's so flexible. And I think especially for things that are really visual that you need to be able to visualize to make a decision, it's really fantastic. You'll find yourself not even being able to decide what to do because the options are just so endless. So it's helped me so much. It's helped me make so many decisions. And it really helped me be able to work alongside our last renovation and make decisions and make modifications as we needed. And the result was that I was able to test a lot of different ideas and refine them. And then when it came time to make decisions in the construction, we were able to make really well-informed decisions because we had tried out so many different options with the renderings. So over the past three to four years, I've been using Home Styler and I've been teaching myself how to use it. And I'm getting better and better, definitely have gotten better over time. So everyone keeps asking me how I can do this. And I'm like, I figured it out myself. It's that easy to use once you know the basics. And so that's why I've made this video because I just want to demonstrate the basics of how I use it and what you can do just to show how easy it is. And then as you get to use it, you just learn so many other things as you need to figure them out. But the basics of just getting a floor plan and adding furniture and creating the renderings is, as you'll see, remarkably easy. So this is how I do it. File, open or import from an image. I say draw manually. And I have these measurements. So I know that this area here, from here to here, is 1.8 meters or 180 centimeters. So I've set the scale for this now. This is now opened in Home Styler and I can start creating this to scale. All I need to do is draw around the edges and it doesn't have to be perfect because you can edit it later, but I just go around the edge The other way you can draw is with a square. This property isn't very square shaped though, so it's actually easier, I think, to do it this way. That's close enough to start off with. So you can go about and fiddle with this and make it perfect if you want. So for today, I am going to focus just on this kitchen, living and dining room area. Creating floor plans is actually, once you know where each of the things are, it's actually pretty simple. So the first thing we've done is draw the walls. And the next thing we need to do is add windows and doors. So we go to, we go to model library. The two main areas you use is structure and catalog. Structure relates to the building and then catalog relates to furniture and fixtures and fittings and things like that. So here, what I wanna do is I wanna add some windows. Yeah, I'm gonna do swing doors here. Now, when you scroll through these, you can see that um, some have dollar signs on them. That means that you need to pay in order to get them. Um, but the ones that don't, you don't have to. So I'm just going to look for something similar to what is here. Now, what you can see here is the window in the drawing only goes across here but what i have is much bigger so 
it's up to you whether you want to remain authentic to any of these products. When I'm doing uh, furniture, I always try to make sure that I'm careful about that because you want to be able to know it, what the scale is. Otherwise, if you drag it too small, it doesn't really reflect the size of the room if you want a bed or something like that that is a standard size. But when it comes to things like windows and doors, I kind of just find something that I like the look of and then I adjust the size if it's just for something like this where I'm just trying to get an indication. So I'll just add this door here. What I'm going to do in this room is make a few changes to the walls. Even though these are the walls that are here, I'm going to make a change because my friend Libby wants to do a renovation. So I'm going to make a slight change and put a peninsula out here, making the kitchen slightly bigger because that's what she is aiming to do and it will look better. So here is where the door is opening out. And if I press flip, I can keep pressing flip as it goes around until it's in the right position. Now that we have windows and doors, I can then go to views. So by clicking up here, I can then have a look at the room that I've created so far. Now, what I noticed straight away is that these are not on the ground. And when I click on the door, I can see that the elevation is 85 centimeters. I want the elevation to be zero because I want it to be on the ground. So that's straightforward. Also, it's sticking up higher than the wall. So I can just go height here and drag it down until it looks good. So that's 258 and I'm going to do the same here. To make them the same height. So this is the current space that we're looking at. I might actually want to change this. So we've got white, but this door that is slightly different. I don't like the color of. So this is where it gets really creative because I have the frame and the shape of these, these doors, but any of them, whether you like the color or not, sort of doesn't matter because as long as the design and the shape is what you want, you then can go into replace material. And there is all of these options of all the different things that you could make it. So I could make this wood just by dragging it onto here. I could also go to different types of glass. Maybe I could make it blue glass if I wanted to in that section. And the options are really kind of endless of what you could have here. So yeah, I might just do that gray for something a bit different so you can distinctly tell. And I always say replace the pocket material because that's always what I want to do. So we have this floor plan here. It's coming together a little bit, but all we have so far is the shelf. The next thing you want to do before I add furniture is have a think about the finishes here. So when I click on floor, I can then go over here and once again, change anything to any of these things. So I can say a wooden floor like this. I could say I want a quartz, maybe bright red if I wanted. But for this, I am going to say natural grain wood. Maybe we'll go dark. So here we are, we've done that. And the other thing we can do is change the wall color. So similarly, we can click here once we've selected the wall and come and choose any of these finishes. But the other thing that we can do is just go RGB and just choose simply a color. So I can see all the wall paint in here also. This is sometimes easier because it's already pre-selected. So I could just choose this and then I can say, apply all settings to all walls, just to easily make all the walls in that room the same. So now we have that, we can move on to furniture. So in here, there's all the things that we might want. For this space, I'm going to first do the dining room. So I'm going to scroll down to dining room and I can see a few different options here for the types of furniture. There are tables and then there are dining sets. So depending on what you want, the dining sets are already set up with chairs and tables. They can be a little large, I find, but very easy. If you want to go to tables, you have more of a selection, but you also have to individually place the chairs normally. So we could get a table, adjust it like that, go back to chairs and select some kind of dining chair that might work well. And then clicking on this and holding to rotate around. And then I'm simply just pressing um, copy and paste on the keyboard to add these again. Another thing that you can do here is say I don't like the color of these, but I did like the style. Once again, I can do the replace material and go to fabric and perhaps choose white. And I've selected to do that to all of them. 
So we can continue to add furniture and different things to this room. But for now, the final thing we might want to add is lights. Now we can add a range of different lights. So I am going to add, there's down lights. So I could add perhaps a down light here and perhaps this set of lights over the dining room. And then there's also other lights. Of course, you can get wall lamps. Just to demonstrate, I might put this one on here. So I've got some lights in here. I also might want to add a bit of greenery. So I can add this here. So I haven't added the kitchen yet because the kitchen will be a little bit more fiddly, but at least we've got something happening here. So at the moment, you can't quite tell the textures of these things or anything, but this view is only actually for sort of this workspace area. When it comes to actually rendering it, it will look a lot better. So if I go now to render, I can set up the camera to the location that I'd like to set it up in. So I'd like it to look here. I can zoom out a bit so I can see a bit more by clicking over here. And then over here, there's a few different options. So the important thing to look at here is the resolution. Do this one in 2K. And we can choose different settings, gen generic, daylight, night. So I'm going to say daylight and I can choose different backgrounds. So depending on what you're doing, you, you'll want a different background. For now, I am just going to, I'm going to choose this for now. So now that it's set up, this is the view of what it is going to look like. I can then press render. When it is complete, it will be available here. So this is showing now, it's going to take about three minutes. It's currently 5% done. So I can come back in three minutes and have a look at that image. So while we wait for that render to go through, I want to add the kitchen. Now the existing kitchen is in this space here, but to reflect the renovation that Libby is going to do, I'm going to do it slightly different. Now there's two ways you can do the kitchen. You can go into the kitchen catalog and there's cabinet sets, which are pre-made cabinet sets. They have an entire kitchen, so you could literally just select that and plonk it in there. Now they obviously are not necessarily the right size for a space. These are a lot bigger than the space we have available. They don't give you a lot of flexibility, but they're very simple. And so I often really like to use the cabinet sets when I'm just trying to do a, a wider floor plan. I, I really like them when I'm still just trying to figure out a space and want to have something as a placeholder for a kitchen to have the idea of a kitchen and then and then you're able to refine it in more detail later on. So because this space is very specific, I want to do this individually. So I'm going to my favorites here where previously I have pressed the star button and found things that I like. I find this really useful because by saving things, it means that I then have almost like a short list of items that I like to use and it saves me having to go through or if you go to sofas for instance there's so many options and you could scroll for so long looking for something what I like to do is just when I find something that I like pressing the star button and then I can go to my favorites and and it will be saved in here so it still has the categories but then you have your shortlisted so that's the one I just saved so for the kitchen here's things I've saved before I'm going to use these cabinets just to get the shape that we want I can move this so I can see this here I can move the camera back. So what I'm going to do now that I'm happy with those dimensions of the standard 600 kitchen benches, I'm going to line them up. Now this obviously is a little bit more work than it would be if I used a standard cabinet unit, but it does allow me to make it a lot more specific to what I want. This is the starting point for the kitchen. I'm not sure what the proper way to do this is, but what I do is I make a cabinet here. I bring the oven out a bit further forward and then that's behind. That's not perfect, but you get the idea that there's an oven. Okay, so this is a pretty accurate depiction of what the plan is in this area. But what you can see here 
is I'm going I'm going to ignore the fact that the handles are down here and these are really just stretched out versions of this because overall it's close enough but what I need to do now is I have all these inconsistent woods so much like just before I'm going to go to replace material That has now replaced it for all of the cabinetry items that were exactly the same. So I need to do it for the ones that are a bit different. So the other way you can do it is you can do material brush and I can take this and then literally just paint on items and go around and paint them all the same color. So I'm going to, so just getting that same color on the top of these cabinets. And then what I'm going to do is take this brass color and add it to the handle. So this is starting to come together. So now we've got a bit of a kitchen happening here. Now I know that she also wants to have, she wants to have a bit more of a feature here because this is a bit open. But what I'm going to do to add this feature that she wants to have is add columns and beams. And so now I just want to add some finishing touches really to the decorative components of this. I'm going to do some renderings. So I'm just going to see how they come out. I think I might do one at night as well. And do one from this angle. Okay, so while they go, we can check up on the original rendering that we did of this space. And then this is it from the other angle. Now, after doing a little bit more work and a little bit more designs. Here is what it is looking like. So I think I need to make some changes to this beam here. And I think I need to change the position of this light. And there's a few things I think we can do to improve upon this. But it's pretty incredible, all in all, that I have been able to create this really in such a short amount of time for free. I don't have any skills or any training. I don't know anything about this stuff. Um, so I think it's pretty incredible that we're able to create this so easily. So that's it. That's a really quick example of the basics of how I take a floor plan and make it into a rendering. I'm using it a lot at the moment to refine the design of our house for the upcoming renovation that we have planned. And so if you wanna see more of that, make sure you subscribe. And also if you wanna see some other renderings I've done of other projects, I'll leave links to the other projects that I've done recently where you can see the renderings going into real life of what I actually did and how close it is and how accurate it can be. So I'll leave that linked and I'll also link below the link to Home Styler. That's it for now. I'll see you in another video.